I'm just here saxing out that outdoor supply. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of bait. Probably just some fat heads and minnows, but I got my little, my bucket. So I'm gonna be up at the power plant uh, for two nights. So tonight, all day tomorrow, and then uh, the next night, and then Thursday, I uh, should be going by lunchtime. Hey, shiners will pick up just about anything from catfish to bass to walleye to whatever. I'm gonna try it, so we'll see. So that's it, bait's ready to go. I'm packed up, I got snacks. Let's go to the power plant. At any of these bank angling locations, if you guys come down, guarantee you're gonna find trash, okay? Don't be all put off by that. It's still a good fishing location, but while you're there, if you would, just uh, pick up a small bag worth of garbage and uh, do your part to clean up the mess. There's no way around it. There's always gonna be people who throw trash. I know that's not you, and I know it's going out of your way to clean up after others, but it's what we do. So we'll keep our bank angling locations tidy enough that we can come back and enjoy them. I killed these minnows on the way down here. I don't know what I did, but it's just a bucket full of dead minnows. <laughs> I guess the ride off the truck and back this path, I just destroyed them. But anyways, you can see the hair rig is just set up with a minnow on it. So it's the same hair rig, it's just instead of putting corn on it, I put a minnow on it. I look like I'm about to eat it. <laughs> but what it does, it leaves the hook exposed. You can see the hook up there all by itself. So whenever the animal, or when the animal, when the fish comes in to eat that, the hook is already exposed, it's a quick catch. So you might only get that one opportunity to catch them and you wanna make sure that you do. So expose the hook, hair rig, it works like this too. Well, let me prove it. I hold them by the belly, don't grab them by the back. Just hold them like that. That's Good so catch, one. Paxton. Yeah, Good. that's a big one. Throw them back. Sure is. Get them back home. Now easy. <laughs> <laughs> Good release. Yeah, good good yeah. release. Well done. Good, good catch. There's our first catch of the night, and it's the infamous bullhead. Look at that thing. It's just an adorable little bullhead. Bull The bullhead bite is on. I hope that's a lie. <laughs> I could do with a few less bullheads in my life. Um, hey, Daddy, can I hold him? Yeah. Okay. Watch, he's got, see right here? This is a sharp spine, so hold him underneath and run your fingers up against some barbs. And he's got one on top, too. Yeah. All right, now throw him back in. Good job, buddy. Oh, that's that's a big one. So ended up with another bullhead. And these are some little dinky bullheads too. Look at that. Just tiny little adorable things. So I've come to the conclusion here with um, the bullheads and stuff. I'm I'm just not willing to catch bullheads all night. I'm pulling my lines, man. I I'm happy to just cast. So I'll cast some top water and um, maybe pick up something that's uh, interested in that, but um, I'd rather spend my time and my effort out here casting than uh, pulling in those bullhead. There we go, something worth catching, huh? Yeah, there he goes. I am currently, I don't have a single bait out. Um, Dan is, uh, you know, he's chasing them harder than I am. I kind of gave up. I've been casting off and on, and we can hear a lot of bait running the shoreline but ultimately I don't hear anything big running the shoreline, just the bait. So uh, I'm keeping an ear out and I'm waiting for a bite to turn on. And when it does, you know I'll be here. So much nostalgia coming down here to the old power plant. I used to come down here as a kid 
and uh, set up and just fish for you know an afternoon or an evening or whatever, whatever I could get away. And I never, I don't remember catching much. You know, it's like I was a kid down here, and I'd I'd walk you know 15 or 20 minutes to get down here, and I can only imagine the kind of fishing I was doing. Like, I'm not sure I knew anything about fishing, but I showed up, and I showed up regular, you know, and I, I remember a couple catches. There was a small mouth that I remember I caught down here on a shiner, and the water was a little high. I do remember that, but I caught, you know, and I was just down here. I remember just picking along the edge and almost climbing on the rocks down along the edge so that I could get to where I thought the fish were. This camp here, the power plant, is kind of like the, the beginning. Like when I was little I would come down here and I thought of this as the big lake. And you know whenever you're you know a young teenager, whenever you're 13 years old, this is a big deal being able to come to these waters and be able to fish them and you know the the stories that you've been hearing people talk about you know and when you have these stories of these big fish coming out of here all the big cats the of course the, the striper that come out of here and back then people were even still talking about the landlocked salmon that they had here so there was a lot of lore that went along with fish in this lake and as a kid you don't understand like where they're at or what you stand a chance of catching. So you come down here to the power plant and in your head you're about to catch a, a salmon. You know, you're about to catch a, a 20 pound um, laker or a 50 pound striper, you know. And you don't understand anything about the cycles or the chances of that, the likelihood of it or the unlikelihood of it. You just show up. And so here I was as a kid down here fishing the old power plant. making some oatmeal this morning. Oatmeal and coffee. Mama got me this little French press coffee. So I'm going to use it. I did not mean to make that look fancy. I was trying to get it in the shot. guys ever see me with my shirt off and be like, dear God, he's got his shirt off again. Let me put his shirt on. I'll spare you the beach sweater again. Hey, if you catch me off guard, I might have my jack my shirt off. You know, and if I'm real on a fishing, I ain't stopping to put a shirt on for the camera. You know? I'm going to see Quiet Riot. How cool is that? I won't be able to record that, but I'm gonna be there. There you go. Cowboy coffee without the grains. I should address the fact that I'm not catching. I really don't know why. I, I think I had the right bait. Now of course it died. That's pretty unlucky. I don't know what I did to kill bait. I even cast for quite a bit, and even though the top water bite was on, I got like one tap, maybe two taps. In spite of the fact that there's top water action, there's bait in the area, I'm seeing the bait feed and such, I know there's some big fish out there, but they're just not giving my lures any attention. It's one of the least lucky days I've had on the water in quite a while. I don't know. It's a mystery. I don't even have a line in the water. 
This ain't bad though. It's hot out, guys. I'm not hot. I'm I'm cool. I'm in the shade, but out there in the sun, you know, it's awful hot. Hot, hot. Did I say that? It's cool in the shade, but out there in the sun, it's very hot. So I'm good to be. It's like an old Hank Williams song, right? Best be on a creek bank, laying in the shade. It's a pretty good day, man. It's funny, I'm not catching, but I'm still sitting here going, this is a pretty darn good day. It's just a good relaxed day. It takes age to be able to appreciate relaxation. Like in your youth, you can't do this and be all right with it. In your youth, you gotta be running around. Let the youth run around in circles. I'm gonna chill right here. It's a good day. I have plans. One of my subs just sent me a message, said he's gonna buy me lunch. So I'm going into town to eat and get some chicken livers. I made it back from lunch. Uh, David, uh, one of my subs, he uh, sent me a message, said he's real close, he could have lunch. So we did, we went and had lunch together. Thank you, David, appreciate that. So last night, um, as I was fishing, I realized that up along this side over there, up along those uh, stones that are on the other side, that's where most of the activity was last night. I am gonna push my rig there. I'm gonna push it up the bank, up to the bend, so it won't be as far to cast. I should be able to lay some bait into that deep hole that's back there next to those rocks. I'm gonna use some of Brian's uh, lures that he made, Briar's lures, and I'm gonna just pop a little bit on the top. I'm gonna to catch some bluegills and then I'm gonna cut bait those up. I'll show you some of that fishing so you can see how effectively they actually work. Brian and I went out fishing together the other day with them and we had some good success. I'll put a few clips in from it here and he got a great rock bass too. With a little luck, I'll be able to plug a few up right here as well and use them for bait. I just grabbed this one because it was on top. <laughs> but I'm gonna use this and we're going to go after some bluegill. Oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> so this one pretty much just hit the water. And it's not what we were looking for. But as soon as the lure hit the water. <laughs> so it's not a bluegill like we were hoping for, but how's that for a trophy smallie? Try again. No smallies this time. Got to get past them aggressive smallies. Oh, oh! I think I just caught another smallie. Holy cow! What a fighter! I'm having a little, an accidental smallie session. There we go. There's one with a little size, huh? A little smallie. That was a little bit better, huh? I'm really not fishing for smallies. What are you doing on the lure? So I call Brian's lures high performance lures. And there's a reason for that. They are. Let me get this guy released. One last look. A little smallie. Proven it works well for smallies. Let's uh, let's try and get past the smallies and get a bluegill. It's shocking how aggressively they're smashing this lure. Brian has just done a great job on these lures. And if you're like me and you're just coming out here trying to put some bait uh, on the end of a line, these are great tools to keep in your kit. So it's more than just about catching fish, but we gotta catch bait too. If you wanna catch guys like this, this is the perfect bait piece. Then maybe you should put a couple of these lures in your tackle box. 
so when you're out here you can be a little bit more effective. Well Brian has hit the ball out of the park with his uh, artistry on these lures. They truly are high performance lures. Whoa, look at that one. There's another one. These hooks that Brian's using for here for these guys are extremely effective. If you get them, they're not coming off. Oh, there he is. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, man. You know, when you can catch them on every cast, it makes for uh, you know a fun fishing adventure, especially if you got folks who are with you who typically come out and they don't have the best of luck. You know, they go, they'll come out and go fishing and they just don't catch, you know? So make catching part of your fishing, call Briar's Lures. That's his commercial. I, I do support the local businesses around the area and I think you should too. And that's why I, I throw them in here and I always give shout outs and such. And besides, I use his lures and they're effective. Well, I've proven that that popper works really good. Let's see if this orange one here works, this guy here. Um, I don't know what you'd call that color. It's not pumpkin orange, but pretty good orange. Now, Brian, you forgot to put your signature on there. I'm sure it'll work just as good without the signature. I must have got a prototype. I guess it works. Um, please do inform Brian, your prototype does work. I probably have enough bait, um, but it never hurts to have a few extras. Besides, I'm having fun. I won't lie, I kind of had a, got carried away there a little bit with uh, the smallie bite. I was kind of chasing them for a little bit. So I'm gonna set up a few rods for downline and chunk bluegill. There's gnats, I need a fire. That's that's probably, should be number one. I should probably get a little fire going. so. Just a smolder fire to get rid of some of the bugs. There we go. That was the money shot there. Oh, it's been a few hours, really. Not a fish you would expect to hit on a big chunk bait. But there he is. A little large mouth. I got my fire started. And it's really close to my, my hammock. And the rods are just right back there, so I can get to them easily enough. Here goes a little gadget right here. A little equipment hook. A little bushcraft going on. I'm a little dorky with that bushcraft stuff, but I enjoy it. And as you can see, it's really helpful at times. I procrastinated a little bit. I wanted to get into the water and kind of like get a little bath, but I got sleep instead <laughs> I think it's a night bite thing here so we're really just waiting for the night time to come and it's no rush I'm enjoying it I'm in a good place it's beautiful out and uh, I have bait <laughs> belly's full I already ate I am thinking about making some coffee though just to have that for the night I might do that I'll get the water on and get it warming up so something that I'm very careful about whenever I do chunk bait is that you don't choke the hook out and this is a choked hook. I've talked about this before, but look, the point of the hook's not even exposed. It's inside there. It's no good. It somehow got turned, and now it's like hidden. So basically the fish is protected from getting hooked. Well, that's no good. So we're going to rehook this chunk. See, you go from inside to the outside because of the scales. And watch the scale will pop. See how it pushes the scale out? And this almost always happens. There's almost always a scale right on the tip of your hook. You need to clear that scale. Again, you don't want to choke the hook out. 
So I want that barb to be exposed, you know, really good. Like an, that's an open. Oh, there it goes. Is that it? The line just went the far one there. I'll give it a minute. There's nothing on it. It didn't get hooked. But I'll cast this one out and then I'll. Well, I'm going to cast this one out. I do get asked from time to time about the equipment that I'm using, really rod and reel type stuff. Um, I have some preferences, um, but it's not really about brand or you know what I have specifically. But I think you should have a medium light rod and um, I think six and a half or seven foot. I like both are fine for casting. I like a longer rod. You get a better cast out of it. Um, I have both medium light and medium heavy. They're both fine. They both work good for this. Um, you think about what pound test you want to run and you just you work the rods to match them you know but I have ugly stick rods and Daiwa line counter reels and you guys see that I do a lot of fishing with those three rods those are my three trolling rods downline rods bank fishing rods you know for everything from catfish carp striper trolling for Lakers you know so they get a lot of action and they suit me just fine so if you're looking for something pick up the ugly sticks the medium light and the medium heavy both of them work I have both of them sitting right there um, one of them is the medium light two are the medium heavies I think I actually prefer the medium light so that's it for equipment if you guys are interested you go get what you got to get but that's what I'm using my fishing rod is getting hit I'm not really complaining, <laughs> it's just inconvenient. Yeah, I never would have guessed. Jeez. I'm just throwing them back. Bullhead. I'm not even putting that line in. I'm getting my bath done first. Got my bath. Let's see what we can do. Feel great, guys. I got my bath. <laughs> my bath, guys. All I did is I, I waded in the water. That's all. My bath. Hardly. I still need a shower. I know that. I still need a shower. I cooled off. I was sweaty from the day, so it was nice just to lay in the water. You know what I mean? Number three. Well, oh, this one actually feels kind of nice, guys. All right. All right. You can't see a thing. <laughs> so when I'm on the boat, just so you guys understand, I have this huge spotlight and I blow it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let me help you guys out and get you in on the game here. There it is. We got a channel cat. Not a real big channel cat, but it's just nice to catch something other than a bullhead. For a change. Circle hook right in the corner of his mouth. That's good to see. So the circle hooks are known to do that. They kind of like, uh, they roll. So they just have a way of rolling and getting in there. So that circle hook did exactly what it was designed to do. And I like it because they're easy releases. You know, you, the circle hooks are really safe hooks. But there he is, man. So, <laughs> it's, it's not a big fish, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm not bragging here, but I'm glad to be catching something other than bullheads up here. So we got our first channel cat, and I'm just going to throw it back. I'm not going to be able to show you guys releases very good because of the setup here on the bank, but it's starting, man. You can see the sky's still blue behind me, so it's early in the night, but that's a great, you know, we're, we're moving. You know, we're doing something here. I'm feeling good about that. All right, we let it go. Now my other two lines were showing some uh, movement, so um, I'm gonna look at those. I don't know if I need to address them or not. I caught another bullhead and I actually cut a chunk out of it. So I harvested this bullhead and I'm using it for bait. So just like I am with a bluegill that I harvested, I'm using <laughs> a bullhead for bait. 
I've never used bullhead before. I'm really curious to see if this makes for a good bait. It's on the middle line, so the number two rod. Another one of them things. I'm done with bullheads. No more bullheads. Uh, I don't know if any of that recorded, but we had a huge run. Bullhead, that was the bait, and uh, it was a good run. I thought I hit that. In I thought I hit record. Definitely something on the line, but I'm also snagged. <sighs> Just got me down into something. I couldn't get it out. Couldn't get it back out of the debris. Wow. That one soaked for a while, too. Man, that one soaked for a long while. Hmm. Oh my gosh, guys. <sighs> All three, all three of them I had to break off. The snags were so bad I could not get them out. Gosh, all three lines. That's three rods to re-rig. Good grief. I'm not complaining. I'm complaining. All three of them? <laughs> Man. At some point last night, I just got tired of catching bullhead and breaking lines off. I think just the discouragement got the best of me. It might just be that I got tired. What a great fishing trip, man. And yeah, it was, it was a great fishing trip. You know, the first critique that people get whenever they think about a fishing trip is, you know, the size of the fish or the volume of the fish that you caught. There's a nostalgia about it for me. The hours and days of my youth that have slipped away while down here casting and downlining and just... I have catches that I remember down here that they like changed my perspective on fish in Raystown Lake. And to come back and spend, you know, basically uh, two days, you kind of tap into those old memories and you go back there a little ways. It, it dredges up those old emotions of the the victories and the losses, the catches and the, and the misses. And I had them all again. It's like I remember what it's like to learn that losing fish is part of fishing. And to learn that, le that lesson hard, <laughs> this is a good place for that. I'm sure I lost a lot more fish than what I do now because I've, you know, my rigs have improved and my technique for setting hooks and such is a little better. But it still happens. It's never going to go away. I will always lose fish because I'm a fisherman. And if you're chasing fish, you're going to lose fish. Man, my rigs broke that last night and they kind of discouraged me to a point where I just hung up all the rods. I just left them where they dropped, you know. So they're all hanging there with broken lines on and stuff. No hooks. It looks it looks a little bit apocalyptic. <laughs> like I had the worst disaster of something happen. And my rods are just all crippled right now. But the truth is I was just fishing. And missing fish is part of fishing. That one big rip, man. I wish I could have shown you guys what that fish was. I really have no idea. Hmm but a good fishing trip. Really good fishing trip. My PayPal and Patreon links are below if you want to support the channel. That's the single biggest way that you can do that. I'm gonna hit the highway guys till I see you. Much love, much respect. See ya.